Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today we are going to be reading some nice little horror stories relating to rules, also known as rules horror. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. That was way longer than usual. Hang on. So we're starting off with some really strong un vibes from um you getting blinded because as uh, I I took too long to get the to get in my IV to ink thing to work. Brought to you by my slow as heck internet. So we're starting off with a story called The Goliath of the Fog. Let's get right into this. It's been a very, very harsh fight against a creature from the fog. We've already lost so many people. The names of the memorial wall are growing. However, they haven't died in vain. As the number of monsters has slowly been reducing. It seems that soon we'll finally get our solace. Unfortunately, there is one type of creature that tore apart all our efforts when it first appeared and smashed through everything we knew before. It took us time to learn about what it was, but now that we've successfully documented it, the town stands a fine chance. The creatures have been named Goliaths. And the major reason behind the deaths of people who simply stayed in their houses. List below are the rules that we have made to deal with it, and how we can hopefully eliminate it for good, so that we may all one day rest. Please pay attention. 1. Goliaths seem to be lim extremely limited in number. We estimate about 3 to exist. Now there may be more. The chances of you running into one are low, and they, they also tend to appear alone. Do not worry about other entities while facing one of these. Two. Goliaths take the appearance of massive golems of rotted flesh and bone that appear more as a hodgepodge of meat than anything else. They tower to about the size of a two-story house and have the strength to effortlessly make prayers in the ground with each step. Thus, it's recommended to keep your distance, as you will be swatted away like a fly if you're anywhere near one. 3. Your own weapons do not work on these creatures. Bullets bounce off harmlessly. Blade weapons break. Blunted weapons only even make a dent. Anyone and stupid enough to rush the thing with a vehicle, they end up crashing it and dying. Don't try fighting it with normal weaponry. 4. We have found one singular weakness of this creature, and it's fire. By burning goliaths, they, lose, they gradually lose shape and melt away. However, it takes time for them to burn, and during this time, the brand vision go on and quickly puts out any fires while destroying anything nearby. If you need to escape, fire can be a slight distraction, but don't attempt to kill it. Leave that to the more experienced residents of the town. 5. I wouldn't recommend staying in your home and cooping up. Goliaths have been targeting any buildings and destroying them. So by staying inside, you put yourself at risk of being crushed to death if a Goliath attacks. Of course, if you're listening for the sound of giant footsteps, you are enough born to escape. So your home can still be safe, but it's not foolproof. 6. Running from Goliaths is usually the only way to survive. If you end up being forced into this option, do not run in a straight line. Even though the Goliath may look slow, 
It's massive frame lets it clear huge ground in a single step. Your goal is to break line of sight and lose it from there. Because it's very bad at tracking prey that has gone out of view. However, blindly running will get you killed. Serpentine! That game. 7. If you hear voices from a Goliath calling out to you, do not listen to them. I have no idea what they say or what it feels like, but I notice some people hear voices when near one of these creatures that cause them to freeze up or try to embrace the monstrous thing. Having only seen it happen, I'm not sure if it's something you can resist, but being aware of this information would help you if it can be resisted. The Goliaths are, terif are truly terrifying creatures. Towering constructions of meat that walk all over us as though we, we were a mere ants. However, now we are aware of the fact that fire is a weakness, we can take them down slowly, one by one. Once again, I hope you can stay safe during these trying times, and stay vigilant. Good luck. How to survive the sunken specimen and name the sunken threat level three out of ten survival rate sixty five percent appearance has hook for its hand the rest of the body is unknown signal as it will attack you the sunken lurks under the Pacific Ocean one survivor reported being attacked at a lake, but it is likely that this attack was by another specimen. The sunken will only attack when the moon is out, and won't attack during your um, new moon. It is advised not to swim alone at night unless you have some sort of protection. If you see fish or blood nearby, it's very likely that the sunken is there. If you hear faint splashing or gurgling, it's likely the sunken. How to survive? 1. If you think the sunken is knows you, it will leave the waters as fast as possible. If you are too slow, it will devour you. 2. If you think it has knows you yet, stand still, don't make a sound. The sunken is blind, so it can only notice you if you make a lot of movements. Refer to rule 5 for more tips. 3. The sunken will try to grab you with its hook to prevent this from happening using a right object like a fish as a barricade. 4. Never take your eyes off the hook. If you lose track of it, you will be a wounded, best case scenario, or killed, worst case scenario. 5. The sucker can be easily distracted by noises. Throw an object like a fish or stone far away and distract it and swim as fast as you can to the surface. If there are no nearby objects, standing still is your best option. 6. If you made it to the surface, you're safe. Do not go back into that same spot the following night. The sunken knows where you are. Ooh, that is an interesting idea. I think the subway would really benefit from um, artists, don't you think? How to answer the call of the void. Ah, the darkly enchanting allure of the looming threat of death. Such a bizarre phenomenon, isn't it? The same orga in the, the same organ that drives us towards greatness can't help but peer inquisitive, inquisitively into the ravine of unknowable horror. That exploratory action is actually very natural. Curiosity is a beautifully odd thing. The draw, however, to hurdle yourself into abyssal darkness is not your mind's doing. 
See, something lingers in that old stagnation between life and death. In an hazy purgatory of choice, bookend by the consequences of avoidance and indulgence. And it is keenly aware of your presence. As it turns out, the call of the void is a very literal phenomenon. Number one, luck it out. Ignore it. It will take anything you give it. If it really it's the carnivious ache of powerful memories, you have given it access to a part of yourself. You would do well to practice yoga, meditate, or attend a church service, anything that will reinforce the bond of mind and matter. Note, if it takes on the voice of a living loved one, you should probably give them a call. Either they have lost more than they realize, or believe they have more or to give. Number two, it does not lie. In the midst of your darkness, it will bring you light. It says it will illuminate the path to your richest contentment. As far as it knows, its promises are true, but it's wrong. The light is a bonfire of familiar shadows. The path is costly and apocryphal. This is the root of its unwitting evil. The void lives and blooms through the lens of perception. Some truths, evidently, aren't universal. Number three, do not carry it with you. Whenever there is an opportunity for it to collect you, the void will always be there. Be it as a planting glance or dark obsession. You must learn to look beyond it to comprehend what will become of your reality should you indulge its promises. The danger of a foggy day isn't the miss herself, but what she hides. Number four, be aware of its influence. It's so easy to become lost in it. Should this happen, examples, you are losing more of yourself in the face of every blade of barrel on cliff. Reconnect with family, meditate, or rekindle an old passion. The fullness of the present is your best defense. If your efforts are proving ineffective, well, it's up to you to answer its call. Its gift is worse than life, but perhaps it's better than death. Number five, some say the void is well-intentioned. That much is true. It does not mean you harm, but the, a child does not understand the consequences of its strength against fragility of life. After all, how could some how could love cause something as antithetical, I mean, antithetical as pain? Number six. The beauty is hollow and the peace unfulfilling. It can't give you the paradise it promises. Even the void cannot fathom the breath and restlessness of the human mind. Should you give yourself to it, it will rip your mind out of your body and cleanse all thoughts you've shared with it. This is an attempt to free you of pain and allow you the peace of nothingness. But it cannot see what you have not shown it. All you will be is a disjointed residue of yourself, and you will notice. Number seven, there is only one way to escape its grasp. You must make it hate you. You must convince it you are undeserving of its paradise. Radiate hatred when it engages with you. It will cast you out, keeping your memories of paradise. Well, that's what it thinks it does. I'm not sure exactly what it takes or how much. Regardless, this will kill you. 
but it should completely sever the connection between your original physicality and your soul. Unfortunately, it will also trap you here on Earth. You will roam the land of the living as a nondescript entity. A coglet of energy polluted by foggy memories of a richer past. You may strengthen your new self and rebuild your memories through experience, provided the void has not taken too much. But as you do so, it will watch you. Number 8. Escape is not the end. Someday you may rejoin the world you haunt in full, as a deluded iteration of yourself. The most common form sometimes seems to be as a bird or domesticated animal. If you're lucky, you may find yourself back in the lives of those you left behind. With every life you live, more and more of your awareness of your old self will wither away. This will be confusing, but it will not hurt. Be wary though, for the void is not vindictive. It forgives and it remembers. It will see your fate as punishment enough. And it will deem you deserving of paradise. It will cry out for you. Do not heed its call. <sighs> now, welcome to the office! Hey, welcome to your first day at night block! I'm sure you've already gotten that uncanny feeling every new worker experiences! So I won't hide it, this office block is pretty much haunted. I'm sure you'll believe me seeing how you reacted when you stepped in for the first time. That being said, there are a few rules to follow around here. Don't worry, they're not too complicated and I'll print them out so you have them on hand for the first few weeks. They might seem weird or unnecessary, but trust me, you'll need them. Aside from that, enjoy your time here. The pay is great, so I hope these rules are worth it. Good luck. You'll need it. One well, kind of obvious, but please get here on time. Slackers aren't appreciated by management. Two, the fridge is open. And to all, please make sure to label all your food. Nobody likes your lunch being stolen. Are there Oh, because may not be the culprits, England old food has a tendency to go missing anyway. We've never found out what's doing it. 3. Do not talk to or interact with Larry. He is in the night cubicle to the right on every floor and wears round gold wires to rim some glasses. Rim glasses. He's quite a hard worker and does not like being talked to. This shouldn't be very difficult seeing as he never talks to anyone anyway. Just be careful and make sure the person you're talking to really is who you think they are. 3A If you do, by some chance, accidentally in interact with him, a quick apology should suffice. It would also be beneficial to avoid speaking at all for the rest of the day. Larry's a forgiving guy, but you never know. Four. Do not be the last to leave the building. Larry should always be the last one out at 11 p.m. sharp. If you've been working so hard that you didn't notice, this, you don't notice this cubicle is empty, then you'll have to stay the night. 
Sorry, but if you know it's him getting up, there's a good chance you can make it to the door, out the door before him. It's especially beneficial if you're on a higher floor since he only takes the stairs. Rush you out the elevator before he is fully packed and you'll be you far ahead of him. Anything you brought to the office could stay there for another day. For a if you have to stay tonight, grab a pillow and blanket from the lowest floor on the left in the break room. It should be labeled with a white circular sticker. Take them back to your cubicle and sleep as best you can. If you manage to sleep the whole night and wake up after sunrises, you'll be completely fine. For V, if by some unlucky streak you wake up in the middle of the night, do not leave the building at all costs. I'll only warn you that the place you step out into will definitely not be where you should be. Use your computer phone to pass the time, do whatever, it would be safe as we stay in your cubicle too. Although bad editing isn't guaranteed. Most of the newer ones go down but away by underestimating this place. It's called the Night Block for a reason. For a C, if you need to pee, go as fast as possible, but only if the nights near the elevator are on. If they're not, you're better off just going in your seat. 5. Try to attend all corporate events. However, if you can't make it, make sure to send a message alerting the host beforehand. It should be at least a week in advance. 6. If you ever get a notice that you're a R2 transfer to one of the company's other office blocks in this area, congratulations! Consider yourself lucky. You can forget about all these rules and lead a normal life. Although, you won't be getting special pay anymore. But do be sure to never mention office block 5 or the night block to anything remotely related to, or anything remotely related to this place. This block isn't supposed to exist after the botch construction and Hush has fixed the, the corporate heads ex executed. Although, it's best not to let any uh, outsiders know about this place anyway. Well, that's about it. Be sure to work hard, and we can't hate to have. We can't wait to have you here. Wow, I can't speak, apparently. Oh no, not the swarm. Wasn't well, a an AI YouTuber talking about a swarm of some sort? Oh well. Rules for the swarm. If you're finding this, I'm probably dead, or I've had my I hide out in a hurry, which is probably a death sentence anyway. Regardless, I hope my list of rules might help you. 1. Never get caught in the swarm. Hide in basements or even closets, under even under floorboards. Cinnamon and pepper are, are your best friends, although any strong smelling item will work. Spread around your camp and on yourself. It blocks your smell oh, and serves as a turret. But one of those things decides to bite out of way. Anyway, say your prayers. Three. If you're caught in a field or forest with no nearby buildings, immediately lay flat on the ground, dump your deterrent on you, and pray for mercy. Four. Never draw blood. Not even your deterrent can save you. Either go vegetarian or only use snare traps and butcher the meat in a basement. Also, if you're going through this uh, cycle, hide until all the bleeding stops. 5. Never leave your hideout in large groups without flamethrowers. It will only attack, attract more of them. 6. 
You won't see them coming until it's too late to flee. Listen for buzzing and check for signs of fleeing animals, then follow them. Seven, if you're setting up a hideout, make sure it has an underground area to hide in. Eight, don't bother trying to wait for the swarms to die out. They constantly, they exist constantly, reproducing and eating their dead. It will take decades for them to die out. Nine, the far north doesn't have swarms. Problem is, is up there, you'll either starve or be eaten by cannibal gangs. Even if by some miracle you survive long enough to reach a safe zone, prepare for a brutal military dictatorship and starvation. 10. Guns and blades won't stop the swarm. Only that stands a chance is a flamethrower and that won't work on large ones. Just run. 11. If a swarm does catch you, they will strip the flesh from your bones while you're still alive. The only thing you can do to escape is to end it, but that's your choice to make. We have three left. I think we've been recording for almost an hour now. Oh no, it's almost like half an hour actually. Rules for Dr. Smiley is dentistry. Hello there, thank you for choosing Dr. Smiley's dentistry for your annual cleaning. Here are some rules to make it out alive and hopefully with a few teeth left. 1. Don't trust the staff that are not wearing a sky blue scrub. We never have and never have, have and never will have staff wearing a color other than sky blue. Yet others wearing navy blue, green, and white are not to be trusted. We've had reports of purple scrubs and people that have interacted with such have died by mysterious circumstances. Two, if you value your pearly whites, never book an appointment with Dr. Smiles. He tends to get hungry while working with teeth. Regardless, you will lose a couple teeth with us getting your cleaning. But in the end, it's still worth it. Oh gosh. Tooth horror. Now I know some of y'all are gonna not like the, uh, this one. 3. Braces are not a great option. The term train tracks in your mouth is not exa an exaggeration. When visiting Dr. Smiles, uh, industry, Invisalign is highly recommended. Even if it means cracking a few teeth when you apply the Invisalign, braces are much, much worse. 4. Don't be loud in the waiting area, especially around the kids' room. Those kids in that realm like their peace and quiet. Don't be that person who interrupts the peace. They won't be pleased with your actions. One more thing, do not use any electronic devices for those are easy to track. Hmm. Another small but highly important detail is keep your kids with you at all times. When Dr. Smiles is on his break, he will roam around the building searching for a snack. Maybe even a meal. For instance, if your kid is in the play area, in which they shouldn't, Dr. Smiles loves to visit his children. He will not be too happy if he finds an intruder. However, he is terribly afraid of parents. Example being a parent. I'm not gonna do your gender bullshit. Also, why does why do I imagine Doctor Smiles as looking like the um the a doctor from Little Nightmares Two? Is it just me? Or does anyone else imagine a Doctor Smiles looks like would look like the doctor from Little Nightmares Two? Who knows? 
Six, we do not allow people who have sold their soul to, or to anyone or anything in our establishment. As soon as they walk in, they put our establishments at, at, and other civilians at high risk. So please. Do not be selfish and end many innocents because you want to sell your soul to Satan. Seven, if you are religious, we recommend bringing a crucifix or any other symbol of God. This will protect you from someone who has sold their soul to the devil and there's our establishment. If you are an atheist, rely on sheer luck, although your chances of survival are extremely slim. Eight. Once you are receiving your cleaning, you might ask what flavor. You might ask what flavor fluoride you would like. The flavors are mint chocolate, strawberry, bubble gum, and milk. These are you ready to tell us what flavor you would enjoy and don't take long. Our staff tends to get impatient. One more thing. Please do not select the milk flavor. Dr. Smiles has exchanged that with something else. 9. If you end up having a cavity, run. We recommend sleeping in the in the computer your your clear users and check the x-rays for any cavities. Our staff loves working with drills to remove cavities and they make it a little carried away. Oh, right. I learned the detail to observe is how your, your dentist is talking to other staff. If they mention anything with a series of numbers or simply say that you have a cavity, run. When you are searching for the exit, do it as fast as is possible and quietly. Also, do not follow the exit signs placed on the wall or hanging from the ceiling. Instead, follow the scratch marks and they will lead you to the exit. However, the journey to leave the building is different for everyone. Do, ever, do whatever you need to do to get out of there, no matter what it takes. No matter what you will face. 10. Don't come again. When you leave, we will immediately track you down. If you use a cell phone or any device, if you didn't, we will we'll still do everything in our power to find you and end you. Dame. Last two stories. We can do this. Are you alone at a party? You are at an awesome party, but you are all alone. You want to talk to others, but there's a strange force inside you telling you not to. Trust that force, since it's your only tool to survive other than these rules. Isn't that beautiful? 1. Do not talk to anyone. They can't help you. You don't want to drag them into your mess. Well, that's just anxiety, isn't it? 2. Don't leave the party. It will know. It doesn't go easy on those who leave early. When to leave is mentioned in further rules. Three, do not drink any drinks. They're all spiked. Stick to good old, old unopened bottle of water. Four, do not eat Anything. It's also drugged. 
No matter how hungry you are, don't eat. Anything you brought from home should be fine. 5. Do not enter the dance floor. That crowd is where it mostly lurks and hunts its prey. Six, after some time, an attractive person will ask you to dance with them. Politely refuse to make your way towards the exit, unless they're wearing black. If they're wearing black, then follow rule seven. Otherwise, ignore rule seven. Seven, do not go in for the kiss, no matter how tempting it may be. Thank them after the dance and make your way towards the exit. Eight, do not look back, no matter what happens. Whatever your friend's calling or someone screaming for help, you must keep moving forward. Nine, when you go through the exit, there will be three doors you can go through. It's the last trick of this unnatural party. Only one of those doors will lead you to safety. The other doors will either lead you to death or challenge you as complete to get to safety. There's no... If your heart is pure, then the force inside you will lead you to safety. If it isn't, then it will lead you to one of the other doors. There's no info on the challenge, so if you survive one, then give us a detailed report about it. We'll pay you! Ten. It was a party, so it's probably at night. Go home and rest up. Report the incident to one of the UDA offices in the morning after it opens. We'll take care of it. And apparently this is from the UDA. Finally, we have this story called Wildfires. If it can stop blinding us all. Wildfires. Emergency broadcast. This is not true. There have been several reports in your area of multiple wild wildfires. These wildfires have also been accompanied by sightings of tall, thin, and faceless. It is most likely that attacking this creature will result in more damage to what happened to with the hands of God. Oh, that's a story right there. Due to this, we have created several rules from what we know. Listen to this message. 1. If you have seen the creature, expect your area to catch fire. Leave your home and do not use your car. 2. Stay from all flammable items or put them away. If these were to ignite, there is no hope for you. 3. Have firefighting tools nearby and handy. 4. Drown all small fires. 5. Obo obey local laws regarding open fires, including campfires. Six, these creatures are known to grab like the hands of God. If you are about to escape your home, make sure to bring objects like the Bible. It's better faith than being unworthy in the eyes of a creature. Six A, if you are unlucky enough to be entitled unworthy, then expect to be stomped and torn to by shreds by the creature. Seven, spread your family member. There's on. In the off chance and you or your family members are taken. 8. Leave pets as bait. Never bring anything with you. 
Nine. These creatures show intelligence higher than the average human. Tricks will not fool the creature. And apparently the message will repeat. Another day in Texas. That was r slash rules horror. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!